What's up everybody, Steve here with Steve Invest. Today I'm gonna to be talking about investing in vacation rental properties. I'm gonna bring you through one right now that I'm interested in making a purchase on. I uh, we'll probably will end up making an offer on this property um, specifically. Uh, before we dive into it, I do wanna just let you know the benefits of vacation rental properties and why I love them and why I invest in them is because you have the ability to block out dates and use them whenever you want. And obviously you make revenue if the numbers make sense. So you can build up um, some, some serious income off of vacation rental properties. And then again, you can use these properties whenever you'd like, as opposed to uh, annual rentals where you, know, you, you have the properties, they're cash flowing for you, but you don't get to use them. So I specifically am looking around the state of Florida on uh, different coasts as well. And we just spent some time up in uh, Clearwater, um, actually stayed at uh, Ben Mala's hotel. I love the area in Clearwater, St. Pete. And we did travel down as well and came across some other areas in Sarasota County, which is Longboat Key. So if you check out this property here, this is the one I'm talking about. It's kind of like a little boutique uh, condo complex setup, And, um, it is ground floor, which, you know, there, there could be some issues with flooding if, uh, if it was a direct hit with a hurricane. But as you can see here, it's got Western views going right out. It is a small little studio. It's got a Murphy bed and a pull out couch here, <clears throat> but it's a cool little setup. It's got a full kitchen and everything. It's done up pretty nice. Um, a lot of times I'll buy properties that will need a lot of work. And, you know, the only thing that I might do in something like this is um, lay over the tile floor with some some vinyl planks something like that but all in all it's in good shape it's turnkey it, it could go into the rental pool right now as is and it currently is in the rental pool and I'm gonna go through the financials with you guys as well um, to show you the seller uh, well the listing agent provided me um, good financial report obviously you'd have to back it all up with you know, their, their tax returns and so forth to ensure that the income and expenses are 100%. Um, but it's not a bad little deal, as you guys can see. It's got a little uh, patio you can walk out on. And it is facing directly west. You got the pool right here and then the beautiful Gulf of Mexico. So my intention, this is about, um, if we take a look at the map here, I'm in Southwest Florida. This is probably about an hour and a half north of me. It's just south of St. Pete Beach, Clearwater, so you can still get to those beaches, but uh, it's a little more tame in this area over here. There's not as much going on like St. Pete Beach or Clearwater Beach, but I think it'd just be a cool little spot. Um, the ask price is 285,000, so let's go ahead and bring you guys into the financials on this. <clears throat> so here are the 29 rentals and the rent rates per night that they're going for. Um, January, February, March historically is height of season for most of South Florida. So that's where you're gonna make the bulk of your money. I do need to reach out to the listing agent on this to find out um, January, because January looks a little light. There was only uh, 19 days. so. Uh, the owner might may have booked for themselves 10 days in January. So I want to clarify that because usually in most cases, January, February, and March are going to be booked solid each, each month on those. Um, so you can see the gross revenue per month on these. And, you know, September, October, November, and December, they're looking a little light as well. So I do want to clarify with the agent if the owner was blocking out dates. And I do want to clarify with the property management company, as you can see here, um, they did do a great job at keep, you know, putting all the this information together because it does make it easier for investors like myself to do a quick glance and see where we need to, to be at. Uh, Gulf Coast Property, uh, they handle pretty much everything in terms of the bookings, the check-ins, the the paying for uh, all the taxes associated with it, the bed taxes, they charge 18%. That's really not bad at all. Um, there's a lot of places that are a lot higher, so that 18%. I'm 
I would also clarify and get additional documentation if we got this into contract. Um, I would co contact that vacation rental company. Couple things to find out. Well, additional information on the bookings if the owner did block out certain dates uh, is there anything we can do to generate more revenue from it and just you know kind of pick their brain uh, about uh, about their experience in managing this property um, as you can see here the expenses the HOA fees are pretty high 707 a month now, if you guys are buying in any kind of association, especially like a condo association, and especially if it's uh, on the beach, you guys want to dig deep into the condo association as well, because what you'll quickly realize, there's a lot of condo associations that are mismanaged, and they'll have a lot of deferred maintenance, and then before you know it, you buy a property like this and then all of a sudden you get banged with a $30,000 assessment because they need to do the roofs or something. So it is important to, to dig in to find out the major things, what has been done in the past and what they anticipate for the future and if they anticipate any assessments in the future. Uh, 707 a month does seem a little bit steep on this. It, do, it appears it does include everything but electric. Um, so we'll, we'll have to dig into the association as well. But a lot of times, you know, what I want to do is I want to get, you know, what I think would be a good price, lock it in. And then, you know, in the state of Florida, we usually put them on as is contracts where we'll have, you know, our 10, 15 days of due diligence. And then that's when we can do our inspection and then, you know, dive into a lot of the numbers and dive into the association. Uh, electric, it's a small place, $51 a month. Uh, I'm going to agree with that. Taxes, I uh, pulled the, the records on it, and that is accurate, about $2,900. Uh, state of Florida, we do have the Homestead Act, so we have to double check to make sure that whoever owns this didn't live there, not this property, because we know that it's being rented out. But we want to make sure that um, you know if it's homesteaded, those real estate taxes are going to be way lower, so we have to compensate for that. Insurance seems a little bit high, um, so I'm curious as to what insurance is included in the condo association, but um, you know, I have insurance on other smaller like-kind properties and I only pay about $600 a month so, or $600 a year. So I'm curious as to really what that includes and also what the condo association um, covers with their insurance. So as we can see, the gross revenue is about $30,000. We have to account for the $18,000 or 18% in uh, management fees. And then the uh, expenses associated with the property is about $13,500. So over here in the red, it's just for me making notes. It keeps things simple. I did the gross income, $30,000. Uh, times 0.82, which gives us the that's the accounting for the 18%. So our real income is about 25,000. 25,000 minus 14,000 leaves us with a net operating income of about 11,500. Now, when I do quick calculations, if I wanted to get you know a 6% cap rate, I'll just take that net operating income divided by 6% to give me my purchase price which would be 191,000. Um, if I wanted to get an 8% return, my purchase price would be 144,000. So that's pretty much how I just do quick analysis on these properties. I'm not that concerned at getting a huge return because in many cases you don't get, you know, 10, 12, 15% cap rates on vacation rental properties. These are treated more like kind of, in my estimation, like uh, class A properties. And again, you have to account for the bonus associated with it, being able to use these properties. Um, and when I say use the properties, I'll usually try to block out dates and use them when it's off season. So I'm not gonna disrupt the revenue for high to season. And also I'll have to talk to the Gulf Coast Property Management Company to find out is, is their season a little bit different than ours. Again, I'm an hour and a half uh, further south, so they might have a, a, a higher season, peak season in some different months that I'm not aware of. So it's important to really dissect that 
um, I've been looking up in the Panhandle, and their season is is different than ours. You know, even in the summer months, they they do really really well up there as well. So you really have to just figure out the the seasons, and then also are you okay using the properties in the off season blocking out dates for yourself if you guys are interested in investing in vacation rental properties i'll have a couple videos at the end and i'll put a few more down in the links below so you guys can check that out as well if you guys got any value out of this i really do appreciate a big thumbs up and uh thanks a lot for your support